Testing, testing, one, two, and a trois. Okay, we're live. Hi, guys, and welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of the metaverse and everything in relation to virtual reality. Today, very exciting video, as we will start to kickstart a new series called What is the Metaverse? Which is for people who really don't understand yet or need more explanation as to what the metaverse is all about. And a very, very simple explanation with a step-by-step just extremely easy way to understand what you can do in the metaverse, what it's for, and potentially how you can use it for your benefit. But first, guys, we are doing an amazing giveaway as one lucky winner will walk away with a brand new HP Reverb G2. That's right, sponsored by HP. Another winner will walk away with a brand new pair of cyber shoes, with the gaming station, the carpet, the chair, and everything that goes with it. And a third winner will walk away with a voucher worth 50 US dollars that you can redeem against your Metaverse Oculus Quest 2 store, as well as your HP, sorry, your Vive port or your Steam VR store. So very exciting. Do remember to enable the bell after you subscribe, be part of the notification squad, as you could potentially be notified as the winner. That's right. All right, let's jump into today's video all about what is the Metaverse part one. So first of all, there's a very good movie that I highly recommend you watch because it does summarize this called Ready Player One. The Metaverse, put very simply, is basically a digital replica of the real world. And there are three different kinds of ways where the Metaverse will intertwine with the actual real world itself. So the first thing in the Metaverse that we can talk about is virtual reality. Virtual reality is basically a digital replica of everything that you see in the real world within a virtual world using 3D software technology, whether it looks hyper-realistic, whether it looks like a cartoon, whether it looks more pixelated. There are different ways to make the metaverse look and feel in different ways. But at the end of the day, once you plug in your immersive device, which you will need for the metaverse, once you put this on your face, forget about the real world, everything that you will perceive will be digital. You will have a digital avatar, you will have digital hands, you have digital watch, you'll be walking around and jumping around and bending around in a digital, virtual, immersive world. It's very much that simple. So if I just transition over, for example, VR chat is one of those worlds which enables you to basically go and meet people within the metaverse. So suddenly you're meeting people from all over the world who look completely different to one another. You can either choose to look human or you can look like an animal or you can look like a logo of a company. It's completely up to you. It's basically like dressing up in a suit in the real world, whether it's a literal suit with a tie and everything or a shirt or a suit that you would have at Disney World dressed as, you know, Mickey Mouse, for example, completely up to you. And then within these worlds, for example, if we go to another platform called Somnium Space, well, it goes a little bit further because in these metaverses or virtual worlds, you can actually, for example, purchase virtual land. You can also purchase virtual goods. So this could be a piece of artwork. It could be a shoe. It could be a shirt. It could be an accessory. It could be a tree, a plant, whatever you want. And depending on the VR app that you go inside of, you will then either be able to store it within that specific world, or you can download it as a, what is called an NFT, a non-fungible to non token. And on that specific 3D or digital good because they all have a signature to prove the authenticity and also limited edition. Or if there only is one, then it will prove through a digital signature that it is in fact the only one in existence in the world and no one, even though they could be copies, no one can claim it to be theirs other than the owner of that NFT. And in the future, these NFTs, for example, if you purchase, let's say, a shoe or a specific avatar, you will be able to download that avatar and re-upload it into various different VR games or VR worlds who will accept 
the software or if you want the file type like Photoshop is PSD for Illustrator is .ai. In the world of 3D, we have .obj, .fbx and various different file formats. For example, in Microsoft, you might be familiar with .doc. So different file formats will be compatible with various different metaverses that are plugged into the world of virtual reality. Now that is only the first part. Virtual reality is, as I mentioned before, a way for you to be immersed. Once you plug in your VR device, you will not get to see anything in the real world. It's very much that simple. Now talking about VR devices, the metaverse must require what we call an immersive device. It can be a pair of glasses, like Snapchat AR glasses. It could be a VR device like I just showed you just now, or it can be another type of device, like for example, a holographic projector, where it enables you to interact with a digital, uh, digital assets or different digital people within the real world. So this is what we're gonna talk about now. So the second part is the VR or the immersive devices. There are three different types of devices. First of all is a virtual reality device, as I just mentioned just now, which enables you to be immersed within a 3D immersive virtual space where you cannot interact with the real world. Everything that you interact with will be within that specific world itself. So for example, this one here. There are two types of virtual reality devices. The first one, which is like here, the Pico Neo 3 Pro, is completely what we call wireless. You do not require any form of PCs or phones or external boxes or anything to have it running. Everything is running within the actual inside of the device itself. It's the cheapest option in order to get into virtual reality because if you want, for example, this kind of device, which is the HP Reverb G2 with a PC, and we go to images, then this is what we would call a tethered VR headset. So for the tethered VR headset, you will basically need a computer, a desktop computer. So if we take, for example, this image here, there we go. As you can see, the lady is putting the headset on and there is actually a cable going along here to the actual PC. Now, generally speaking, these kind of devices provide a much higher resolution than your tethered experience. Even though the tethered experiences are very good nowadays, they're very, very good, depending on the headset you purchase, of course, the PC device, which is this one here, the HP Reverb G2, provide a much better form of immersion within the virtual reality world only because all the graphics and the power that you will then experience inside in front of your eyes comes from all the hardware inside of the PC. So the graphics cards are better, the processors are better, you know, the components inside the PC are much better. However, you will be expected to pay at least a thousand US dollars Normally, more tools are 1800 US dollars up to, of course, 2500 or 3000 US dollars for the best optimum uh, PC VR that is available today. And for the PC VR headsets, you are expected to pay between 600 up to four or 5000 US dollars, depending on the VR headset that you purchase. However, for new people inside of the industry, this HP Reverb G2, for example, is perfectly good because it is the highest end of clarity inside of VR. But do remember that you do need a very strong PC because it won't matter how much you pay, for example, 5,000 US dollars for the best of the best uh, VR device. If your PC is very not great, not great graphics card, not great this, not great that, then your immersion your experience in VR is not going to be that great. So better to have a really amazing PC and a cheaper headset than a very expensive headset and a cheap PC is basically the way we look at it. Now, the other kind of immersion or metaverse experience that you can have is what we call augmented reality, which basically leads me to this kind of video here. 
which is also referred as hyper reality. So basically augmented reality, you might already be, uh, have, have experienced this with your phone or your tablet where you scan a QR code and you will see some 3D digital things that appear in front of you. Now, augmented reality does exactly just that. It is meant to project information in front of your eyes within the digital realm. However, the biggest difference between virtual reality and augmented reality is that you still are inside of the real world and you're not submerged within a 3D virtual reality where it doesn't enable you to see what's going on in the real world at the same time. So for example, here in this video, you see the person is inside of a bus and you see all these ads and all this digital information around in order to augment the reality that they're actually seeing. So that is what is augmented reality. Now, we also have XR or uh, X reality because what it enables you to do is instead of just looking at the information, you'll also be able to interact with that information as well. So that's what we call XR. But at the end of the day, just remember VR is a virtual world where you're submerged completely inside of that world. And then you have augmented reality, which is AR, which enables you to be submerged within the real world. But at the same time, have digital information that's projected as a form of augmentation in the real world itself. So now you see this person walking around, they're about to leave the bus, and then you see all this information in, on top of people, on top of buildings. It's gonna get very crazy, very messy. There's a lot more information that's gonna come around. Of course, it can make things look interesting as well because the real world is gonna suddenly look very colorful. Uh, you'll be able to dress up London to look like a cartoon, you'll be able to dress up New York to look like uh, chocolate, uh, Charlie's Chocolate Factory. You'll be able to do, you know, so many things. And also, of course, when you go shopping, uh, brands will be able to gamify certain things. Uh, they'll be able to add, like, for example, this little dog here on top of the cart. Uh, you know, they'll be able to make things look very interesting so that basically we have an augmented um, an augmented version of the world, an augmented experience of the real world. So that is basically the two main uh, parts of the metaverse. And then thirdly, of course, what we will have is holographic, holographic projection, let's say meetings. Okay. So there will be hardware that you will be able to basically purchase in the future which will enable you to be in the real world without having to wear an immersive headset where the digital uh, information will come to you. So at the moment, this technology is still very in its infancy. Of course, you can mostly project it on a wall, let's say, uh, or you will need, let's say, 10 or 20 different projectors. For example, here is only one projector that's projecting on a screen. And what happens is that you can see uh, the actual hologram. Some of these holograms are already in 3D, by the way, not necessarily projected on a screen because they use various different hardware to make that holographic experience actually come to life. So for example, if we look at this, uh, this one here, which is pretty amazing, there's a circus in Germany who use holographic technology in order to project a circus act with animals inside of the actual arena itself and they're actually going around so it really does feel to people like a 3d experience so this is also part of the metaverse so basically what you need to remember very simply put is that the metaverse is digital information that is either translated within a virtual environment space or is translated within an augmented reality to give more information within the real world by wearing augmented reality glasses, for example, Snapchat glasses or Unreal glasses. Uh, for example, if I just go here, Unreal glasses AR trailer, there we go. And then once within the actual real world itself, so let me just skip the ad, there we go. When you put your glasses on, you'll then start to see the augmented reality within your world. So this is actually not virtual reality. This is the real couch, the real everything, but in AR itself, 
you can already watch movies, you can browse your social media, you can browse the web and all these kind of things. So this is basically what you can do today. It's still very much in its infancy in terms of things that you can do. Here's another demo of another game that you can do today, which enables you to be within AR and experience some of the augmented reality games that are mixed within the real world itself. So this will be augmented reality. And then finally, you will have holographic projections, a little bit like Star Wars, where you will be able to interact with digital information within the real world without having to wear contact lenses or wear glasses or wear a VR device of any kind, because the hardware will be physical that you can actually touch, or it will be something put on the walls that will project something within the real space. So the metaverse at the end of the day is a real world replica within the digital world, which will enable you to meet people, will enable you to go to school, will enable you to buy things, will enable you to basically run, bend, jump in a digital world, just like you would do in the real world. It's very much that simple. So in part two, what we'll talk about is we'll talk about who is running the metaverse? How, where is it coming from? Uh, who exactly has control of the metaverse? What can people do already inside of it? And how safe is the metaverse going to be? But until then, guys, I'd like to remind you that we are doing a brand new giveaway of the HP Reverb D2, as well as a brand new pair of cyber shoes with the gaming station, the chair, the carpet, everything that goes with it. And a third winner will walk away with a voucher worth 50 US dollars that you can redeem against your Oculus MetaQuest 2 store, Viveboard or HP Reverb D2 store. And please, by all means, leave a comment below because we also will be reading people's comments in future videos as we often do. And remember to be part of the notification squad and enable your notification bell after subscribe as you could be potentially one of the lucky winners. Link in the description below, of course, by the way, how to enter this amazing competition, just in case you're asking. All right, guys, I'll see you in the comments below, if not in another video very soon. Take it easy. Bye.